Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us go into the Word of God this morning. Hallelujah. Into the book of Psalms, chapter 114. The book of Psalms, chapter 114. Praise be to the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Read the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When Israel went out of Egypt, the, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange language, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel his dominion. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like lambs. What aileth thee, O thou sea, that thou fleddest? Thou Jordan, that thou was driven back? He mountains that you skipped like rams, and he little hills like lambs. Tremble, thou earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, which turned the rock into a standing water and the flint into a fountain of waters. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks this morning. We bless your name. We thank you, O Lord, and we are etern eternally grateful that you have given us this opportunity, O God, to be in your house, to be saved, to be called your own, O Father. This morning, as we go, O God, into your word, we ask you, O Lord, to speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds, O Lord. Speak to our souls, O Father. You are the one that knows the need of every person in this place. Holy Spirit, may your anointing flow this morning to touch, to change, to transform, O God, to convince of sin, O God, and to turn from our wicked ways, O God, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and I give you thanks, Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed be the name of Jesus. God is good. Amen. We're going to meditate on the word of God this morning under the topic, the presence of God, which brings change. Amen. The presence of God, which brings change. The word of God here shows us the psalmist, uh, let us say, it's like uh, when we sit in our balcony one day and we meditate on things that have already passed and we, we think about it, oh, we wonder and our minds go back and we think about all the things that happened in our lives, good and bad. It is, it is like one of these situations where the psalmist, inspired by the Spirit of the Lord, starts to meditate on the greatness of God and what God had done all the way back to bring him where he is as the king of Israel. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he thinks about where, we, where, he, where everything started. Because when we think about the goodness of God, we need to always go back to where things started. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the book of Revelations, the Lord in, includes one of the churches and he tells them, remember where you came from. Remember where you were. And in another one, he tells them, remember your first love. Go back to the beginning. Remember how it all started. Because we as human beings tend to have uh, that, that way of thinking that, okay, everything's fine now. I can fly. I can run. I can do everything so good. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But we need to always remember the supremacy of the Lord. We need to always remember the mercy of the Lord. We need to always remember His greatness and know, hallelujah, that it is all by what He has done that we are what we are today. How many can praise the Lord? And he starts to remember. He says, when Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. At the moment where David was, Israel was already a, an established nation. Hallelujah. With a king, with so many battles already won, who have seen uh, the mighty hand of God move in so many different ways, seen so many wonders, seen so many miracles. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But David remembers and says, when we were but a house, when we were but a people, we were not a nation, we were just a people. We were living in a strange country. We were speaking a strange language. We didn't have anything that we could call our own. We didn't have a, a, an established identity as such. We were living in another country and we were speaking another person's language. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it is, 
in that time, hallelujah, your identity, who you are, or, or your language, it was something of great value. It was something of dignity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was something that you could hold on to and say, hey, this is mine. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But we know that after these years have passed, Jacob died, hallelujah, another Pharaoh came. And as the people of Israel started to grow, that Pharaoh started to oppress the people. That Pharaoh started to kill the children, the sons of Israel, blessed be the name of the Lord. And he started to oppress them and oppress them and oppress them, hallelujah, into being nothing. Or into feeling like they are nothing, blessed be the name of the Lord. But how great and how wonderful it is that in the midst of that oppression, in the midst of that situation that Pharaoh was creating for the people of Israel. It was not easy, brethren, to wake up every day, work like a slave, not be paid, only get a little food. Looking around, you left your house, maybe you know you, you, your wife had a, a, bo a baby boy, you leave to work and when you come back, the baby boy is gone because they killed him. Or, or the children are gone, your neighbor's child is gone, everyone is crying, sadness. You need to create that environment to understand what these people were living in. It was a constant, hallelujah, uh, a scenario of sadness, of death, blessed be the name of the Lord. And as, as if there was no hope, as if there was only despair, blessed be the name of the Lord. But in the midst of all of that, the presence of God was there. In those 400 years that they had to go through this oppression, this situation, they might have said, well, where is this God? God has left us. They knew that they had lived sinful lives. They knew that maybe they have done things that were not good in the sight of the Lord. And that now because of what they had done, God had abandoned them. But God never abandons his own. God never departs his presence even in the midst of the, the situation that you're going through. Remember again, what they were seeing was only death, despair, oppression, hallelujah, hunger, pain, suffering. And you might say, well, the Lord is there? Yes, he is there also. He is there also. His presence was there. Hallelujah. The only thing is that he was waiting for his perfect moment to bring the change through his presence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he reminds himself, he remembers, we were no one. The word of God rem reminds us that we were sinners, lost in our sinful ways, lost in the ways of darkness, lost, hallelujah, um, bound to go on death row. We were going to die in our sins, but blessed be his name that his mercy reached us and made us what we are today, that we can look back and say, Lord, I thank you. And you can humble yourself and say, Father, it is not I. I don't have nothing. I was not anything. It is all you that has done the great things. He remembers we were no one. We were but a people, a group of people in somebody's country speaking somebody's language. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he says, but when we came out of there, when Israel came out of Egypt, we know the word of God compares Egypt, hallelujah, to the world. When we look at it from a spiritual point of view, Egypt represents the world. When God brings us out of the world, he gives us an identity. He makes us, hallelujah, understand who we are and what he has created us to be. Human beings, mankind has lost its way. It is why today we have people that say abortion is okay. It is why we have people that say today homosexuality is okay. It is because the human being has lost his identity, has lost, hallelujah, the knowledge of who he or she is in the sight of God and what he was created for. But when we come out of Egypt, when we come out of the world, blessed be the name of the Lord, the word of God says here, in verse 2, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel his dominion. God gave them immediately. He gave them an identity and immediately he gave them a country. He established a place for them to live. When we come out of the world, God restores our identity as human beings. God restores our dignity as human beings. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God reminds us or he remembers, hallelujah, what he created us for. 
Because when we were in, the, in Egypt, when we were in the world, we would do the things of the world. We would do the things that pleases the Lord of the world, which is the devil. We would do the things that we wanted to do. We would walk in the pleasures of our sin. We would walk in the pleasures of our flesh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But when we come out of the world, God makes us to remember, hey, this is not what I created you for. I did not create you. I did not create you to be lost in drugs. I did not create you to go around stealing. I did not create you, hallelujah, to do and walk in the sins of the flesh. I created you to serve me. I created created you to worship me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is your identity. But it is until we come out of that place that our identity, who we are, can be restored. He reveals his presence unto us. And he continues to reminisce on this. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, when they came out of there, Judah became a sanctuary for them. Who is Judah? Judah is the tribe, hallelujah, from whence comes the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, the word of God uh, uh, calls him, one of his titles is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah became a sanctuary. When you leave these things of the world, when you step out of the sinful ways, when you say, Lord, I want to leave behind all these things that do not please you, Jesus becomes your sanctuary. God becomes, hallelujah, your living place. God becomes the place where you can take refuge. When the people of Israel were in Egypt, they did not have refuge. All they had was suffering, pain, oppression, sadness, hallelujah, someone who was always beating them, treating them like slaves, and they needed a sanctuary. They needed a place, hallelujah, that was sacred, that was important, that was valuable, hallelujah, and where they could worship the Lord. Because where they were, they could not worship the Lord. As a matter of fact, when you read the word, when God spoke to Moses, what did he tell him first thing? I have heard the cry of my people and I have decided to set them free so that they may come out and do what? Worship me. When he sends Moses with a message to Pharaoh, the message was, Pharaoh, let my people go so they can worship me. Because that is what I, I did not create them for you to kill them. I did not create them for you to oppress them. I did not create them for you to let them suffer hunger. No, 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 no. You Now you have to let them go and so they can worship me. An establishment, a reestablishment of the identity of God's people. That is what he created us for. And Jesus becomes this sanctuary. Jesus becomes this place where we can run to. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A sanctuary is a place where you run and hide from, from danger. It is a place where you go and you know that you are safe because the sanctuary protects you. It is a place where you go where you know that you will be taken care of because the sanctuary takes care of you. When we see the conditions that the world is living in now, uh, where we have uh, places where there's war and people run and flee, we have refugees. When they come, what do they claim of the other country? They claim, I want sanctuary here. I want this country to take care of me. I, I don't have nothing. I, I, I come from a place where there's so much danger. I need a place of sanctuary. That is what Jesus is for you and for me when we come from that place. When we come, hallelujah, as the word of God says, from that place of the roaring lion that goes around trying to kill, to steal, to destroy our lives. But when we come into Jesus, when we come to the sanctuary, blessed be the name of the Lord, when that roaring lion comes around, the lion of the tribe of Judah says, no, this is mine. You cannot touch this. He, this, he is now, I am his sanctuary. You cannot touch him no longer. You cannot cause him harm. He is now mine and I am his sanctuary. How many can praise the Lord? That is what Jesus is to us. Judah became a sanctuary and Israel became a dominion. God give them, gave them a place. God established for them borders and told them, I know you were there 400 years suffering. I know you didn't have a country. 
I know you were speaking in a language that was not yours, but now I am going to give you a place. This is going to be yours now, where you can speak your language and where you can obey my word and live freely under my government. How many can praise the Lord? Because when we come out of, of the world, when we abandon the things of the world and, and, and the things that do not please the Lord, it's not for me now to live, ooh, la di da, I'm going to do what I want. No. He brings us out and he says, okay, my child, now you are mine. You are mine. And th this is my sanctuary. This is who I am. And now you're going to live. This is the border. This is your country. And this is your language. This is you get, what you have to live. Don't do anything that is not here. Don't do anything that I didn't tell you to do. Just live according to what I tell you here. And you will be perfectly fine. God establishes for us a place of living. How many can praise the Lord? And you might say, well, that was for Israel. No, my brethren, it is the same for us also. The book of John chapter 14, Jesus said, I go to what? To prepare a place for you. Because I want for you to be where I am. He is up there. He is preparing the place for you. But in order for you to be there, I need to do this. I need to start right down here on the earth. I need to start training, train, train. If you can't do this, you can't live up there. Because to be up there, I need to do this. I need to fulfill this. I need to speak this language. I can't speak the language of the world. The world says, no, men and men to get married is fine. No, no, no. God's language says men and women. It's not fine. The world says, the world's language says, oh, it's fine, kill the baby, it's no problem. No, 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 no. The word of God says that from the womb, God saw that little baby formed. As a matter of fact, the word says that he embroidered that baby in the womb of the woman. It is a sin to kill a person. That is God's language. I need to speak the language of God in order to live in that country where are you going, brother? Are we going there? Are you going there this morning? Are you ready to go there to that country? Blessed be the name of the Lord. To that dominion that he has established for us. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And he starts to wonder. He says, the sea saw it. And fled. And Jordan was driven back. Saw what? The presence of God. They didn't have to speak. They didn't have to say anything. Remember, that's why he starts in verse 2. It says, Judah became a sanctuary. God took care of them. It was like God taking Israel by the hand like a child and saying, now I am going to take care of you. And he starts walking with them through the desert. And when Israel came before the, the Red Sea, the word of God says that they became, began to tremble. They began to become afraid because Pharaoh was just behind and the sea was there. What are they going to do? Lord, you, including, they said, you brought us here to die. God does not bring us to death. God brings us to life. God brings us to life, brethren. And so they came there and the word of God says that what? Moses started to cry out. The Lord said, Moses, don't cry out to me. Stretch forth your hand. Was it the hand of Moses? Was it the rod of Moses? No. It was the presence of God. The word says that the sea saw the presence of God over his people. And the sea did what? <sighs> Opened and let them walk through. The word says that Jordan was driven back. God continued his word. God continued his promise, not only with Moses. That's why he speaks about the two places here. God did his work with Moses and God continued to do his word or fulfill his word with Joshua when they reached Jordan. Once again to remind them, hey, it is the same God. I am the same sanctuary. The same God that was with Moses is the same God with Joshua. It's the same God with Jesus. It's the same God that is working in your life today. He has not changed. The sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. The word says that the mountains skipped like rams. He compares the mountains like jumping uh, rams. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? The word of God says that when his presence, what came down? His presence came down on Mount Sinai. The word says that the mountains started to shake. Because at the presence of God, things have to shake. 
things have to change. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It was not them. It was not what they could do. It was not who they were. It was the presence of God that was with them that caused the changes that they could see in their lives. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he starts to ask, what ail thou, o see? What, what ail thee, O thou see? What caused you to draw back? Jordan, how, how were you driven back? The Red Sea was a great sea. Jordan was a great river. Impossible for mankind to separate and create a way for you to walk through. But what happened? He continues to ask, mountains, what made you shake like rams and little hills like lambs? And then he, he confirms it and says in verse 7, Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. He once again goes all the way back. He says, this, this is not something that, that just happened. No, 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 no. This is a word that was given to Abraham, that was passed down to Isaac, that was passed down to Jacob, and it fulfilled. And that's why he says, earth, tremble. At the presence of the God of Jacob. If God's presence is in your life, things are going to start to shake. You say amen? amen? If the presence of God is in your life, things will start to shake. Things will start to tremble. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And at the moment of that trembling, don't be like Aaron and say, well, well, this is us. Let's make another God and worship him. No, 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 no. Throw yourself down and worship God. Throw yourself down and give him the praise. Give him the glory. Because at his presence, things will start to change. Haven't you gone through things, sometimes some moments in your life where you go through the things and you didn't do anything. And hmm, the situation resolved. The door opened. Oh, the enemy was eliminated. Well, that happened. And like, but Lord, I, I didn't even pray about it yet. No, no, no. It is my presence that is with you. Don't worry. It's not you. It's me. Hallelujah. It is the presence of God that causes the changes around us. There are changes around us that might happen and you say, well, why did this happen? I didn't do it. No, it was not you. It was the presence of God. It was the presence of God. Sometimes as the youth... I, I, I usually have this example. We, we tend to have friends, especially at school, university, or maybe even work, colleagues that are not beneficial to us. And maybe you don't see it, but God sees it. And his presence is in your life. He'll start to shake the things around you. And the enemy will have to... And you'll say, well, why, Lord? I lost my friend. No, no, you did not lose a friend. You lost an enemy and you didn't know it. But God, his presence goes forth before us. That's why the word of God says that his presence goes before us. Who does that? A parent. When you have a child, you don't, the child does not go before you. You go before because why? You are the adult. You need to see if there's any danger, everything's okay. So whatever, whoever comes behind you is safe. And you go for it. If there's a danger, no, we can't go here. We have to go there. Oh, no, not here. We'll go there. The word of God says that his presence went before the people of Israel. By day as a pillar of cloud and by night as a pillar of fire. He always went before them. Guiding them. Showing them. Providing for them. Freeing them from their enemies. He always goes before us. And if you might say, well, Lord, th sometimes there are people behind us. Yes, he also takes care of what is behind you. The word of God says that when Pharaoh came behind, his presence went in the back. The angel of the Lord went in the back and st stood be 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 in the middle of the people of Israel and Pharaoh. He takes care of us in front. He takes care of us in the back. He takes care of us all around, my brethren. The word of God says that he has us in the palms of his hand. He has us covered completely. Because he is your sanctuary. He is our sanctuary. He takes care of his people. And that is where the psalmist is wondered. Amen. He says, tremble earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a standing water. Who can do that? Who can turn something that is hard into flowing water for his people? Not only... My brethren, if you listen, if you meditate on this, 
God did not make the rock liquid. It was not liquid rock. God changed the rock into water. He changed the nature of that situation in that moment. It, it, because you, you might think, well, no, they, they drank liquid rock. No. He changed the nature of that thing into water for his people. And the word says that the flint into a fountain of waters, a rock, the mountain. What is it telling us? What is the psalmist telling us, my brethren? It does not matter what you're looking at. It does not matter what you're going through today. God is able to change it into something that you won't even imagine that he can change it into. All by the power of his presence. All by the power of him being your sanctuary. All by the power of you having left behind the things that do not please him and have him now as your Lord, as your God, as the one who controls your life. Let us stand to our feet this morning.